thank you for that. You, as you're talking about peptides, the thing that came to mind for me was stem cell therapy. It sounds similar. Yes, absolutely. 100%. You're very, very right. Very, very right. These two therapies, the stem cell therapies and the peptide therapies, are therapies that have very similar actions in the body and they're used uh, unbelievable success by the anti-aging medicine people around the world because these two therapies are anti-aging. Why? Because they reverse the uh, ac any acceleration of the aging process caused by inflammation in the glands, in the tissues, in the organs, and so on and so on, what I just discussed before. Yeah, absolutely. This is amazing. You are now tuned in. You are now tuned in. So let's talk about healing on Hindsight Media Radio, 103.5 FM. Now here's your host, Yvonne Pierre. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About Healing, where I have conversations with guests about various topics on healing the mind, body, and spirit. Today, I will be talking about healing from burnout with my guest, Tatiana Mercier, a registered nutritional therapist, a yoga teacher, and a functional medicine practitioner that specializes in burnout. And she's located in Weybridge, which is in Southwest England, UK. Welcome to the show, Tatiana. Hi, Vaughn. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I am looking forward to this conversation because I have experienced burnout from overworking, but also um, I had a heart attack in 19, I mean 19, I'm tripping. I had a heart attack in 2017 um, and the fatigue and feeling exhausted over the years has been tough sometimes. But before we get into that, I'm curious to know, Tatiana, as a practitioner, what led you to specialize in burnout? Yes, yeah. very good question. Well, me also, I <laughs> suffered from burnout as so many millions of women, more than men, men also, of course, but women much more than men all around the world. Um, when I was in my early 30s and it all started, it all started with labor, going into labor. Uh, and before that, I need to mention something. I need to mention that, um, unfortunately, uh, for many years, 20 years prior to that event, uh -huh. I had been on the wrong diet for my constitutional type, but little did I know back then because I was not a practitioner at that time. Right. So that's just like background to give you meaning that, meaning there will be some predispositions, right? There will be a, uh, some factors that are going to um, predispose us to becoming burnt out at, at, at some point in our lives when we are exposed to high levels of stress. So I went into labor and because I was so malnourished I, I thought I was having the best diet ever of course right. I was con I was convinced <laughs> that I was having the best diet ever um but uh, actually I wasn't but I didn't know and nobody nobody told me mm -hmm. and because of the lack of nutrients and especially minerals uh my uterus never dilated and it was like like rock and I went also into hospital thinking that I was going to die <laughs> Mm. And that's because my mother had a very traumatic uh, births of myself and my two sisters. In, in each case, she had to go for a C-section. And her health was literally, I mean, never the same again after those C-sections. And I don't know, I inherited that fear, right? And yeah. in my mind, in my mind, I kept thinking, this is my last day on earth. I'm going to go to hospital. I'm going to probably die in labor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and obviously that that's what we call perceived stress, right? Yeah. The stressors in life are real physical stressors, right? And yeah. perceived stressors. So things that you imagine in your mind. So 
my first stress in my body was I was very malnourished. That causes a lot of stress to your system, uh-huh. right? Because you need to be, you constantly need to have a specific set of nutrients in the right amount, not only to be in optimum health and wellness, but especially if you're pregnant, because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you need to have optimum nutrition when you're especially, you know, pregnant and giving birth and so on and, and breastfeeding, for example, right? And the other stress was me thinking, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And so I went to hospital and what happened, I never dilated. And they, in that hospital that was in France, they had as a policy to avoid C-sections at all cost. And so they kept me with contractions for three days. I cannot begin to tell you what that did to my system. You know, I was in severe contractions for three days and three nights in hospital. They didn't even give me a real bed a real room because they were packed. It was in spring. And you know what happens in spring, right? (laughs) All the babies are born in spring. So Uh. it was packed with women having, uh, uh, you know, giving birth. And they gave me, they gave me a room, a labor room. And I had to sleep on a mat that was not even a real mattress on the floor because I was sleeping on the uh, labor uh, table is it's metallic so it's impossible you know it's extremely uncomfortable mm, yeah. and and so I mean I had a succession of uh, stressors the stress the thinking oh, I was going to die the stress of being not be, being very well treated in that hospital the stress that uh, I didn't have a bed to sleep the stress that my body was in severe oh, hor- I mean very painful contractions for three days and three nights right all those factors, well, uh, initiated what it's called the, the fight or flight response of the nervous system, right? You have heard that term before, haven't you? The, the fight or flight, yeah. which is it's a mechanism uh, that we have integrated in our body, right? That allows us to run as fast as we can away from the stress. So... That uh, caused my body to be flooded with adrenaline. And then what happens is that once you secrete adrenaline, the second stage of the stress response, that's what it's called. It's it's Mm -hmm. called a stress response, Mm -hmm. is that your adrenals, your adrenal glands, which are very small glands too, by the way, they have this shape of two almonds and they sit on top of the kidneys on the meat back. They start producing another stress hormone called cortisol. So what happened to me was in those three days and probably a few days prior to the the whole event, because I was very worried and very nervous about the whole thing, my body started producing a lot of cortisol. And um, all of a sudden, I found myself flooded in these stress hormones. And then my, my baby was born finally, finally by C-section when they realized that I would never, ever dilate. And um, I was so stressed that I couldn't breastfeed because that's what, that's what happens to women. They're in hospitals, they tell us, oh, you have not enough milk to feed your baby. Right. right. But right. it's not that's not the case. The case is we've been through a lot of stress and with the secretion of distress hormones, the production of milk is reduced. Mm. So, yeah. So um, uh, we left hospital and I was devastated because I wanted to breastfeed my son. Right. And I did ask the dietitian in, in, in that hospital, I asked her, do you think once I'll go back home and I'll be more relaxed, I'll be able to uh, secrete to produce milk? And she said to me something that really helped me dramatically. She said, yes, don't worry. Go home, rest and relax. And you will have milk sufficient to, f- to feed your son. And when I thought, oh, finally, I'm back home. I'm going to relax. So my fight or flight response of my stress uh, response is going to go back to normal. I'm going to be able to, to regenerate my nervous system. Right. I couldn't. I couldn't. Because the new stress was the crying baby at night that wouldn't stop crying. That experience in the hospital, I, my, I lost my sleep. I couldn't sleep anymore. 
not even five minutes, not even five minutes per, per night. So I went back home and I couldn't sleep. And you know what happens when you cannot sleep, right? Because I think it happened to you too. When you get exhausted, you get, uh, you know, you lose all your vitality because yeah. sleep is the greatest rejuvenator. Yeah. Sleep is the greatest, um, you know, the factor that will help you um, fix your cells during sleep. Mm-hmm. and I didn't have that anymore so this is how I got burnt out and then at home I didn't have much support and much help because my ex-husband was extremely focused on working and I didn't have my family around me no friends no family members not nothing and I had to do everything the cleaning the you know picking up the mess cooking blah 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 the child that was screaming all the night all night uh, hungry the breastfeeding for hours at night yeah and so this is why so many women get so burnt out when they have children yeah and the factor the added factor that i had no help at all mm. and so you know on top of that um, there are some genetic predispositions, right? And some psychological predispositions, the type A, right? Type of personality, the perfectionist, I can do everything on my own. I don't need any help. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Right. And well, the lesson, one of the main lessons learned out of that very painful experience, because let me tell you, unfortunately, once you enter into a state of burnout, the clinical term is hypocortisolism. Mm. Hypo meaning low in cortisol, the, the, the hormone. Cortisol is a fantastic hormone that allows, that allows the human body to exist. We cannot live without cortisol. If we lose all our cortisol, we only live seven days and then we die. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So we do need the cortisol, but we don't, we cannot, the body cannot deal optimally when there is excessive production of cortisol. And when is this going to happen? That's going to happen when there are excessive demands. Yeah. Like, for example, uh, too many things on our plate. Yeah, uh, and what and and who suffers from that more than anyone else? Women, yeah. women. Once you enter into a state of hypocortisolism, meaning burnout, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to regress it, and you need the right approach. So I did knock at the doors of many GPs, but they all said to me, "Your symptoms, as per the book, indicate that you are depressed. So we're going to give you antidepressants." Mm-hmm. Well. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Sure, my mood was extremely low. Mm -hmm. But intuitively, I knew that that was not the root of the problem. So I never took the antidepressants because that that wasn't going to change anything. My problem was a a problem with my sleep. I couldn't sleep because I, I, my, my circadian rhythm, you know, the circadian rhythm is the night, day, light darkness rhythm in the body yeah. was disrupted because of the constant chronic stress right and the antidepressants don't do anything for that and you don't need to be a phd or a doctor or a practitioner to understand that so i never took the antidepressants mm. and and um i was lucky enough to come across a doctor in naturopathy from bastyr university who worked at that time here in London. And I remember ringing up his office and speaking to the, his assistant and explaining my problem. I was crying, please help me. I cannot sleep. I'm going, I'm feeling like I, I'm going to commit suicide at some point. But out of, you know, I was despair, uh, desperate, desperate. Yeah. It's not, it's yeah. not depression. It's not depression. Yeah. It's you're desperate. You don't know what else to do. Yeah. So I went to see this doctor in naturopathy, and for the first time, I heard things like the term stress response, it's dysregulated, and it's because of all that stress, and it's because of your diet, for the first time, right? And you, we need to add more protein to your diet. And, and he gave me a prescription of magnesium mm-hmm. and and the b vitamins and minerals and omega-3 fatty acids and mainly a lot of vitamin c mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And, you know, because um, this is quite interesting, but the main nutrient cofactor for the adrenals, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is the, it's, it's vitamin C. Vitamin C allows the adrenal glands to uh, function optimally and to manufacture the hormones of stress. When you are in a state of burnout, there, there are stages, right? There are, there are stages. The first stage, the first stage of burnout is you, you have a manic life. <laughs> you have a lot of on your plate. Okay. There's a lot of stress all over the place, perceived and physical stressors, right? And, and not just stressors outside your body, like work and deadlines, stress, mm -hmm. stressors inside your body. Like for example, what can stress up your system? Infections, right? Mm -hmm. Dysbiosis, toxicity. Like, for example, if you have um, a cavity or you have gum disease, mm -hmm. yeah? Just having gum disease is a very potent activator inside the body of the HPA axis, which is the brain and the adrenals together. And that triggers you know, the secretion of cortisol. So you're going to be flooded with cortisol just because you have gum disease and you're not fixing it. Yeah. Wow. And yes, of course. Exactly. So that excess cortisol, what happens in the body? Excess cortisol is going to um, force your body because it's telling your body, hey, we're being chased by the tiger. You better right. run for your life. Right. Mm -hmm. But but in, in reality, it's just a, it's just an infection in your gums. So but but you're not running. You're sitting at a desk or you're sitting in the car or you're at home watching TV or whatever. Right. Right. And and so what happens is that um, that forces the uh, glucose stores in your body to be released. Why? So glucose is sugar. Right. Why? Because glucose is going to give your muscles the strength for you to run as fast as you can. So you're going to be flooded with excess sugars in your blood. And that's going to give a message to the pancreas. And the pancreas is going to say, oh, my God, we need to secrete a lot of insulin to put that excess glucose into the cells because we don't want it in the bloodstream. That's not good for the for this person. Right. So so all of a sudden you're going to have high insulin levels. And if you and, and you will notice it because that's silent. So you don't know you go, you know, you go to work, back to, to whatever church you have, your friends, your life, normal life. And throughout this whole, you know, this state, you are flooded with cortisol and flooded with insulin over a period of time. High insulin causes insulin resistance. Right. And what is insulin resistance? Insulin resistance is the beginning of diabetes type 2, metabolic syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Abdominal obesity, because when you have too much cortisol in your system, cortisol is a hormone that, when in excess, is going to tell your uh, energy stores in your body to stay there and not move. Don't budge because this person is going through so much stress that I think there's a war and famine and we need to keep this glucose reserves and fat reserves in the body just in case. Yeah. So that fat is not going to move and it's going to be stored mainly in the central, um, in the center of the body. So being constantly stressed causes the person to become overweight. And this is why counting calories does not help because it's not treating the root cause. The mm -hmm. root cause is not that you're, yeah, you will be eating more because when you're stressed automatically, your brain right. will translate. Oh, I need nutrients. I need, will the, the message from the body is we need nutrients to support the adrenals, to support the brain and the nervous system because you're so stressed. But you will translate that as, ooh, I need something that gives me energy straight away. And what would that be? It's not going to be the carrot salad, right? right. <laughs> it's going to be the muffin. It's going to be the crisps, right? The chips, I think you say chips in America. It's yeah. going <laughs> to be the Coke, right? Yeah. The, high, the high energy foods that give you that boost immediately. Okay. And that, that causes, yeah, tell me, tell me. 
Okay, so you mentioned earlier, so I wanted to touch on, you mentioned about the fat and the um, protein. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm vegetarian, most people who are vegetarian have to take su certain supplements that you, you would naturally get from meat, like B12. You can't be get B12 mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables. It has to come from either from meat or a supplement. But as far as fats, you can get that from avocados and also protein. A lot of vegetarians and vegans eat, eat nuts um, or take protein shakes um, to get that protein. But you have to have is important that you do have proteins and fat and a balanced diet. And everything that you're saying um, about what's going on in the body sounds like balance. Mm -hmm. It sounds like um, your balance, that stress throws your balance off. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't communicate whether you're in fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. so that throws off the how the body functions. Um, and you were talking about, because I'm diabetic, Mm -hmm. I'm too diabetic. So a lot of what you were saying, um, I'm sitting here literally taking notes because, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm type two diabetic and mm -hmm. I know there are times that I'm eating the right foods, but my sugar is off the chart. Yeah. And I realize those are the times I may be under a lot of stress or something else, maybe yes. in the body, like an infection or um, if I'm coming down with a cold or something, it completely throws mm -hmm. my clothes off. Yes, so, absolutely. Uh, and I feel better. I feel not just feel lighter, but I feel yeah. I have a lot of health issues. Um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And going that route um, has, I'm not in chronic pain Yeah, um, like I was. So it really did improve my health. I want yeah. to kind of veer back um, and talk about how we can, you talked about the adrenal glands, mm -hmm. how we can reverse. Yeah, the, very good question. The, the adrenal gland. Yes. Okay. So when we are in a state of hypocortisolism, which occurs after years in years of abuse mm. okay we have abused our system over years and we never did anything or what i call it of value to fix the the excess stress and the excessive demands we never do anything of value right. it, it's not because you say oh i'm very stressed i'm exhausted i know that i have to do yoga i'm going to do to the sunday yoga class and that's it well, right no <laughs> yeah. that is not doing anything of value yeah, the impact is going to be minimal. You would need to do yoga daily and you would need to do yoga at specific times of the day. Mm. Yeah, and you would need to adapt the style of yoga because there are some yoga styles that are very demanding. Yeah. So you want to avoid those athletic types of yoga, right? Your diet needs to change. You need to take a bunch of supplements, for example, the main supplement for, for adrenal fatigue, people call it adrenal fatigue, but it's not, the adrenals are not fatigue. It's a compensatory um, response from the adrenals and the brain to protect the, the body. Because if you secrete too much cortisol, cortisol basically has a, um, a catabolic effect on the tissues, meaning it's going to break down tissue. This is why people with burnout have number one, as I mentioned earlier, larger abdomens, mm. fat around the middle, yeah. and their muscles are very weak and they have muscle aches and pains and they don't know why. Mm. Yeah, they go to the doctor, this hurts, this aches, and the doctor gives them an, the, the wrong recipe, which is a, a painkiller. Yeah. A painkiller is not going to treat the root cause. A band. <laughs> exactly, exactly, which is going to yeah. make everything worse by the way. So what is the root cause? The root cause is the stress that is going, causing uh, an excessive uh, secretion of cortisol and cortisol does that. It, it starts breaking down your muscles. So you will see people with flat buttocks, weak legs, thin legs, 
Mm. larger upper bodies because the, the fat is being stored in the middle and very weak arms. So they cannot do a push up, for example. They mm. cannot do lunges at the gym. Yeah, because the, their muscles are being eaten up by the excess cortisol. Oh, wow. Yeah, literally. So we need a program. We need a program that is, first of all, individualized to each person's different situation, different circumstances, because your burnout is not the same as mine. Right. Right. Everybody will have different um, stressors and different uh, manifestations of the stressors. Right. So the main ones that everybody will have will be fat around the middle. The metabolism goes off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, insulin resistance and diabetes. Yeah. And my, uh, uh, aches and pains all over the body and they don't know what to do about them. And a state of inflammation that's constant. The whole body is inflamed all the time. Yeah. Mm. So um, what to do? Okay. What to do when a person is, has been over a lot of stress for many years and then boom. And there's coffee, no... I wanted to throw in coffee can throw it off too, right? Too much coffee. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very good point, Yvonne. People that are burnt out, they will need boosters, energy boosters, of mm -hmm. course. So because because one of the features of being in a state of hypocortisolism, again, very, very, very low levels of cortisol, is that you cannot get up in the morning. You cannot get out of bed in the morning. It's very difficult. It's a torture. I remember when I was burned out, getting out of bed in the morning was the hardest thing ever, ever, because there's no energy for you to move your body and to get out of bed, let alone, let alone to go have a shower, make breakfast, blah, 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 blah. So what do, do these people go for? Immediate energy boosters like coffee, yeah. yeah, like cakes, like things that are made with flour and sugar, okay, donuts. High, so high fat, high sugar, and high salt foods. Mm. Okay. And that is going to create a cycle, a cycle, because when you eat those foods thinking, oh yeah, I am, I'm dying. I have no energy. I need something that gives me energy quickly because I have to go to work because I have to do this and that. And they eat those foods and they drink those drinks. Okay. Two hours later, the, the, there's gonna there's gonna happen there's something gonna happen in their bloodstream which is a what we call the sugar crash mm. because those uh, the, the excess sugar from the donut is short-lived and yeah. so two hours later boom a crash and that's when they they have brain fog that's when they have they get moody that's when you cannot talk to them or they cut your head off that's when they you know Things bad things happen and they, they start again. Oh, I need something to make me feel better right now, right now. Give me that Coke. Yeah. And yeah. it's an it's a it's a never ending cycle. So to answer your question, when the person is already very burned out, secreting very little cortisol, okay. The program that this person requires is very complex and it lasts several years, several years. Because once you are there, there has been some damage, unfortunately, caused to the HPA axis. The HPA axis is the hypothalamus in the brain, the pituitary gland in the brain, and the adrenal glands. They work together as a team. And, well, they, they lose some resilience, right? So, so we become extremely sensitive to all stressors very sensitive to noise, very sensitive to light, very sensitive to people arguing, you know, not far away from us, very sensitive to a, do a dog barking, you know, we become very intolerant to, to stressors. So mm -hmm. we need to rehabilitate the whole system again to create more resilience, right? More metabolic, also reserve, like for example, better insulin sensitivity, okay? Also to support the liver detoxifying properly because with all the, the stress and all these things, the, the, the liver and the GI, the gastrointestinal system suffers a big blow as well. And so 
we need to, first of all, remove the stressors. Okay. So what the stressors, whichever they are, they need to go. And here is, this is the moment of truth for a person with burnout. This is the moment of truth because this is when they will be confronted to making paramount changes in the way they think and in the way they live. It will be either that or their health will be will get worse and worse and worse over time. Yeah. So that forces the person to prioritize, to smarten up, to become wiser mm-hmm. and to and to make changes to their life, right? Mm-hmm. To their lifestyle. Then, for example, in terms of supplements, you need vitamin C daily. You need the B vitamins because the B vitamins, B6, B12, B, you know, all these vitamins uh, are required in um, the production of the neurotransmitters that allow you to feel relaxed in the brain, Mm -hmm. in the production of adrenaline. You'll still need adrenaline, right? If we don't have adrenaline and if we don't have noradrenaline, epinephrine and norepinephrine in America, and if we don't have cortisol, we die. So we do still need these hormones, but we need to balance them. So we also need a lot of minerals, okay? Because the HPA axis requires a lot of minerals for it to function properly, like calcium, like magnesium, like zinc, like sodium, and like potassium. So the person that's very, very burned out, as long as they don't have high blood pressure, they should have salt daily, salt, Himalayan, right? Himalayan salt Mm -hmm. dissolved in a glass of water, a teaspoon, for example, in the morning Mm -hmm. and uh, in their foods. We also need magnesium because magnesium improves sleep, improves metabolic function and, um, you know, uh, helps with the measures of fatigue and energy. And um, it's super important for the HPA axis. We need omega-3 fatty acids. Okay. So the omega-3 fatty acids to answer your question about diet. Yeah. As you know, they are present in various foods. Okay. Mm -hmm. But really, really, we need, especially the ones from fish, the um, EPA and the DHA, because they have been shown in scientific studies to reduce elevated cortisol when it's too high and to balance the uh, excessive neuro, neuro, neuronal um, activity of the brain when there is either yeah too much, too, too much cortisol, too much uh, of these hormones, but it also decreases inflammation. So in my clinical practice, for example, the first nutrient that I prescribe to people with type 2 diabetes is fish oils in, in therapeutic uh, dosages. Um, right. I also um, recommend, of course, the practices that will calm down the mental sphere, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything that's mindful, mindfulness based. Yeah. It can be Qigong. It can be Tai Chi. It can be yoga, meditation, pranayama, breath work, right? That is absolutely key. Yeah. Whether you are in a state of high cortisol or very depleted cortisol. That is extremely important to, to practice. Yeah, there are many, many studies, many scientific studies proving the infinite benefits of practicing this type of activities to balance the metabolism. Yeah, they have very good benefits in people with uh, metabolic uh, dysfunction, like type 2 diabetes, and also in balancing the activity in the brain. So you would sleep longer and uh, your body would be more relaxed throughout the day and you would have you would have a better life. Yeah. 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 So what are the things? Uh, yeah, the diet should be a low GI diet. This is very important so that we don't cause. So what is a GI? GI is the glycemic index of the carbohydrates. Okay. They, um, they compare the impact of the sugar in a carbohydrate to a measurement of, um, of sugar in the bloodstream. Yeah. So, for example, what is the um, uh, eating an apple? 
does eating an apple when it hits the bloodstream with its glucose, with its sugars, will it elicit the same response as eating half a cup of sugar? That's that's the idea behind the glycemic index. So you want to have carbohydrates that are low on the glycemic index. You can find many glycemic index counters and calculators online. That's very easy to go and, and, and find. And so you want to have low GI, glycemic index, carbohydrates, okay? Meaning, for example, uh, things like um, chestnut crackers instead of wholemeal bread, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You want to have um, an, a, 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 a cup of berries instead of a cup of grapes, yeah, and so on and so on. You want to have, and this is because you won't be eliciting that the, the sugar spikes that are followed yeah. two hours later by sugar yeah. crashes. So you'll be less inflamed and uh, your HPA axis will be less triggered and you'll be able to start balancing the whole system, as you mentioned. Very good. It's about balancing. Balancing, yeah. Homeostasis. Oh, not just, sorry, not just lowering your carbs but eating the right carbs exactly correct well done do not remove your carbs do not remove the carbs you need them because if you remove them you won't be able to produce energy okay it's not when we are burnt out it's definitely not a time in our lives to start dieting to start fasting to start counting calories to start doing things that are gonna make us feel awful and we're gonna be more depleted than before yeah it's a time in our life to be very mindful of everything we do the people that we engage in relationships with (laughs) we want to avoid (laughs) (laughs) we want to avoid the people that are confrontational even if it's our own spouse even if it's our own mother yeah even if it's the closest person in our lives we we definitely will need to make choices this is what i was saying those choices yeah. yeah, those choices are not easy to make, but it will be a matter of life and death, very, very literally, right? So uh, the Mediterranean diet, for example, and the paleo diet have shown uh, very good results in in the treatment of, of burnout. They're, these are diets that are very nutritious, very nutrient-dense. They are high in fibers. We need fiber, okay, to... Uh, promote digestive transit and keep st- keep things flowing in the system, um, and they have uh, low GI, usually low GI carbs. Yeah, we also need adaptogenic herbs. Those are very important. The adaptogenic herbs are, for example, holy basil in supplement form. Mm-hmm. Um, also, rhodiola rosea. Very important, that one. Uh, ginseng, right? Uh, licorice in, in, in capsules. Those supplements are fantastic because when you take them, they go into your bloodstream and they detect levels of cortisol. It's magical. Don't ask me wow. how or why. Yeah, because plants are so, you know, what, what's a plant? What's a herb? It's, uh, it's God. It's God himself in nature right represented yeah. represented in the form of an agent that we are going to ingest that it's not toxic we cannot say the same about pharmaceutical drugs right right so so this her- adaptogenic herbs they go into the body they detect the levels of cortisol and if you have high cortisol they're going to bring those levels down they can mop you, it up can you mm. use those herbs in a tea Yes, yes. But um, you need to have high doses, you need to have therapeutic doses. Mm. And and the tea is going to be very gentle. So yes, you can throughout the day. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you will also need to have a therapeutic dose in, in a capsule form. Okay. Or, or in um, what's it called? which I don't uh, use at all in my clinical practice, which is in, God, I forgot, you know, with the, with the dropper. 
um, in liquid form, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So also something that I use a lot in my clinical practice is uh, something called peptides. And the peptides are chains of amino acids, of proteins that come from, uh, for example, the adrenal glands of um, bovine bovine origin from cows Mm. and um, these peptides um, they're also magical they go into your body and they immediately detect where your adrenals are so for example if if we take adrenal peptides right because Mm. there are peptides for every single uh, gland and and tissue in your body I, i work with peptides for the testes for the uh, ovaries, for the stomach, for the um, pineal gland, and so on and so on, for the thyroid, right? So if we take, for example, the adrenal peptides, this tissue in, in that has been right uh, you know transformed into a little powder in, into the it's like a, it's like a it's like a herb inside the sub, the capsule yeah they, i've been them a lot <laughs> in um protein shape yeah yeah the collagen for example the collagen drink <laughs> that is a peptide you're right you're right yes the peptides that i use are are in capsule in capsule form and they come from russia and um, they, the, 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 the person that discovered them um, has been awarded with medals of honor and many prizes because the discovery has changed the lives of many people, um, many human beings around the world. So they go to the, your body and if you're taking the adrenal peptides, they recognize your adrenals and they go to the adrenal tissue uh-huh. and they act as an in, an inflammatory agent and they then rejuvenate the tissue okay. so they are absolutely yeah they're absolutely phenomenal um so that's uh that's another um secret of in my uh toolbox that i use with my clients and of course we need to rest right we need to rest <laughs> that's uh, something uh, challenging for someone who is burnt out because in the first place they got burnt out because they, they didn't practice resting enough right so yeah. so there we need to change the way we live right it's yeah. a change in our lifestyle basically yeah, yeah. now yeah. when i wake up in the morning i've been trying to get up earlier um, and go to bed earlier. But like this morning, I woke up around four something, I meditate, I pray, um, and I'm getting better at meditating. I've been meditating for some years. And I take that time, that's my me time, to meditate and pray and and really get centered before I start my day, before I wake my son up for school. So I just wanted to share, because you you mentioned earlier that it's an, it's, it's important part of the lifestyle change is to also incorporate meditating and yeah. meditating have absolutely been a lifesaver for me. Mm, um, wonderful. Yeah. It's, it truly have, um, because sometimes it helps with my patients. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I know what you mean. <laughs> it has helped with my patients. Like if I'm, just a small example, standing in the store and, you know, I'll kind of go into meditating and focusing on my breathing or concentrating on something other than my weight. Yeah, Um, exactly. And that has helped. And also meditation has helped me when I had my heart attack. I started meditating before the heart attack, but having the heart attack, Mm. I subconsciously Mm. began to meditate. Absolutely. I understand. And I, really, I know what you mean. And I really think that calm my calm that I really think that saved me. I really one hundred percent saved me. Yeah. One hundred percent. it's amazing what you're telling. I totally understand what you're saying because same here. I don't know where I would be right now if I had not engaged for so many years in this practice of meditation unlike you i meditate in the evening (laughs) i prefer to have finished all the things that i needed to do in the day and then be free 
and yeah. then sit down in the evening and meditate and and my meditations are a moment for me to as you said you said a great word to center yourself and ground yeah. yourself so yeah. important to have the time to do that to it's a time to reconnect with infinite consciousness the infinite consciousness of god and commune with that infinite consciousness and empower ourselves through that communion through that divine communion that is that you would be surprised Yvonne to know that that is the real purpose of meditation as per the classical meditations from you from from antiquity yeah so I want to go back to um peptides talk about the benefits and you touched on it already some of what the well you kind of touched on it already saying that it reversed some of the damage um what are some other benefits of peptides yes so the peptides they go to the tissues and Mm. and they first of all they have an anti-inflammatory effect yeah. So when there is a health issue in the body, okay, the tissue in question is inflamed. Yeah. So yeah. when a tissue is inflamed, whether it's the blood, yeah, the blood, I mean, the blood can be, uh, can contain inflammatory markers, right? The vessels, for example, in high blood pressure, the problem is the vessels are very inflamed and there is, uh, you know, trouble in the lining of the of the vessels so uh, alzheimer's the brain is inflamed right Mm -hmm. um ibs the entire gut is inflamed right Uh, i mean and so on and so on and so on i can go for hours um so the main action of these peptides it's is their anti-inflammatory effect so what happens when the tissues become less inflamed and less inflamed and less inflamed they recover their original functionality so they start Mm -hmm. functioning optimally yes because what happens is that when a tissue or a gland is inflamed or an organ is inflamed they cannot function optimally anymore right and this is why disease ensues yeah. So yeah. if we give them back, if we restore that functionality, then the organ is going to do its its job naturally, unimpededly, as nature intends for it, and and your body is going to start functioning better. Yeah. And that's how you start reversing the diseases. That is treating a root cause instead of applying a patch. Yeah? Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, but there are. From what you're saying is different types of peptides, like peptides, like it's peptides for the adrenal gland. Are they, are they, are you saying that they're different kind that target different areas or? Yeah. So, so they come from bovine origin, right? So they come from Mm -hmm. cows. Mm -hmm. So the peptide for the retina, for example, that I use with my clients that have visual issues right Mm -hmm. eyesight issues like cataracts and so on and so glaucoma and so on right um these peptides are extracted this this proteins are extracted from the retina of the cows and so when they are taken by the person yeah you swallow that in the capsule form Mm -hmm. they have the feature that they are they 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 have affinity immediate affinity with the same similar tissue in the person's body which is going to be the retina of the person Mm -hmm. so they're going to go to the retina and immediately they're going to bind to the retina they're going to be absorbed by the retina okay and they're going to start having this very potent anti-inflammatory effect which restores the functionality of the eyes yeah and so that happens yeah it's absolutely phenomenal it's absolutely phenomenal and and so i have peptides for the vessels Uh, i have Mm -hmm. peptides for the ovaries and uh, the peptides for the ovaries are fantastic for women in their perimenopausal and menopausal years because they are going to 
help the ovaries with the production of natural sex hormones, right? What happens in perimenopause is that we start losing our very, very, very precious uh, yeah. progesterone, our very precious estrogen, and our very precious testosterone. That is yeah. the that is in a nutshell the menopause that that we unfortunately have to experience one yeah. day or the other. Yeah, yeah. which mm -hmm. is why which is why it, it makes us all feel so awful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the, I'm going through it now. So oh my goodness, yeah. and me too. <laughs> <laughs> and me too. So to support that transition, mm -hmm. it's very important to take these peptides for the ovaries because the progesterone and the estrogen come from the from the ovaries, right? Which throws off the hormones and all that stuff. It helps the the the, yeah. the ovaries to produce them, yeah, to mm -hmm. to produce them so that we don't <gasps> we don't go, you know, all of a sudden, <gasps> no no progesterone all of a sudden because the 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 drop in these hormones can be very brutal and very suddenly. So uh, that's why so many women feel so awful during the, the, the process of the menopause, yeah. I have peptides as well for the stomach, for people that have, for example, celiac disease, mm -hmm. for people with IBS, for people with IBD. I have peptides for the liver, for people with any sort of liver disease, liver inflammation, anything. Yeah, I have peptides for the thyroid, for the adrenals, as mentioned, for the brain, for the nervous system, and so on and so on. I mean, these supplements are phenomenal. And if you, you yourself, Yvonne, or your audience would like to get them, please visit uh, www.profound-health.com, profound hyphen health.com and you go and you search for peptides the peptides are called uh, the the brand is marvels uh, sorry nature's marvels mm -hmm. and i'm gonna give you and them a discount code so that you apply this discount uh, at checkout so the the code is vitality zero one Vitality zero one, and is that zero the just the number or? Uh huh. Oh yeah, sure, sure. The number, just the number yeah. zero. Uh huh. Good okay. point. And the number one, yeah. And then you'll have a discount, and for any product, not only the peptides. Yeah. Thank you for that. You, Pleasure. As you're talking about peptides, the thing that came to mind for me was stem cell therapy. It sounds similar. Yes, absolutely. 100%. You're very, very right. Very, very right. These two therapies, the stem cell therapies and the peptide therapies, are therapies that have very similar actions in the body and they're used, uh, unbelievable success, by the anti-aging medicine people around the world because these two therapies are anti-aging. Why? Because they reverse the uh, uh, any acceleration of the aging process caused by inflammation in the glands in the tissues in the organs and so on and so on what i just discussed before yeah absolutely this is amazing uh, it is amazing i want to say i want to mention something because you inspire me with your amazing questions i want to say to all the people out there that are listening that are burnt out there is a world of options available right now for you yeah. to reverse to reverse your burnout unfortunately it's not going to be you're not going to found these options by knocking at the gp's door i'm so sorry to say yeah. but that's not their specialty and they are not trained to either understand burnout or treat it so please yeah. please i beg you and your audience don't waste your precious time trying to find the solutions for burnout in the conventional medicine arena but there is a world an ocean of options amazing options question about peptides again sure sure health. sure um if someone is struggling with weight gain yeah could that help them as well 
Right. Okay. That's a very good question. So weight gain. I love that topic because um, with burnout, you put on weight, as we, as I mentioned already. Mm-hmm. And I have suffered with weight issues because of my burnout that I managed to improve quite dramatically thanks to a few fact, uh, factors, which mm-hmm. are the following, which are the factors that will help anybody, not just myself, but yeah. anybody suffering with overweight issues. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number one, first and foremost, Okay, and speaking of gems, this is the greatest of all the gems. If you have issues with weight gain, you need to balance your cortisol and you need to balance your insulin. Okay, nobody is going to lose weight. Well, young, younger people, yeah, like in their 20s and teens, it's easier for them. Okay, but if we speak of women, women in their 40s that are perimenopausal, and mm-hmm. beyond, yeah, yeah, that have lost estrogen and or progesterone and testosterone, mm-hmm. okay, which are very important hormones in the balancing of the metabolism, right? It's going to be very difficult for them just to count calories, yeah, and and and, they, and to exercise like crazy. They're, they're going to be very frustrated mm-hmm. because they're not going to see the results that they want. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you I'm sure you agree with me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So the number one strategy for weight loss is to order via a practitioner like myself, for example, mm-hmm. a lab test that here in the UK costs 117 pounds. It's going to be the same more or less in the US, which is something like $125 or something like that. Something very affordable. Yeah. Okay. That is called the comprehensive adrenal stress, um, uh, adrenal stress profile. And that is a saliva test that you you collect the saliva at home you don't again you don't have to go to any clinic you don't have to get stuck in traffic you don't have to go and pay for expensive parking lots and stuff no you you receive a kit at home yeah that's what i do with my clients i order the 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 kit for them with the lab they receive it at home two days later and they follow instructions the instructions are very easy spit in this tube fill (laughs) it up and Mm -hmm. put it in the free in the freezer in the freezer yeah. And they have to do that four times in one day. That's it. It's very simple. They send the samples to the lab. The, the lab analyzes the cortisol in the saliva. And then they contact me, the practitioner or the other practitioner, practitioner that any person would prefer to work with. And they we receive the results. So I'm going to see, oh, okay. So this person is showing depleted cortisol in the morning. So she's exhausted in the morning. And then at around noon, between 11 and noon, more or less, very high cortisol, meaning, hmm, something's going on. It's going to be diet related. This person is eating a high GI, high glycemic index diet, or going to the gym and exercising like crazy, or something else is happening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I start detecting the potential threats and the potential factors that are making you put on weight. Okay. And then when I finish analyzing the curve, which goes up until midnight, I have tools and I got, I sit down with the person. Okay. Tell me what are you doing at 12? Oh, I'm doing this, this and that. Oh, okay. Now I see why there is so much, much cortisol there. So we need to change whatever it is that you're doing whether it's diet, exercise, um, engaging in confrontation with your husband or whatever, right? We need to fix that. We need to fix that. So we do that over the whole day. And that those are the first strategies to put into place. If you want to lose weight, imagine that, imagine that. Yeah. Trial and error for years. Yeah. (laughs) Imagine that. Exactly. And it's not going to be, uh, count calories, exercise like crazy on the treadmill, and uh, and you know, the, 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 and take one hundred supplements. It's not really going to be that. It's it's balancing the cortisol and balancing the insulin, and 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 we do that. Those two therapeutic games are achieved with diet, a specific nutritious diet, 
mm-hmm. not a diet that's devitalized, de- uh, devoid, excuse me, in nutrients, okay, that has no taste, that is bland, jello, you know, I know so many people eating jello all day long. Yeah. Because- yeah. <laughs> right yeah. because that's so low low calorie and i'm gonna lose so much uh, fat and yeah and i'm gonna go it's to not, the treadmill and run for an not, hour yeah it's not sustainable. yeah exactly it's not sustainable it's gonna cause you a lot of health issues in your body you're gonna get very inflamed you're gonna secrete a lot of cortisol because you're gonna put your whole system in a state of fight or flight yeah and your insulin is gonna go up through the roof so you're gonna store the very stubborn fat around the middle and you won't, and that fat won't budge. Mm. Yeah. So um, the treatment for obesity that I propose also included in my course and mm-hmm. in my program mm-hmm. as a, a side effect of burnout, right, yeah. is includes exercise adapted to the specific person's cir- circumstances. Okay. It's so I need to adapt the type of exercise, whether it's Pilates or swimming or walking in nature, okay, mm-hmm. or so on and so on. I have to adapt it according to the specific person's uh, situation, uh, circumstances, the duration, okay, yeah, and the frequency. So it's not going to be the same, okay, to exercise daily, uh, to exercise three times per week right and definitely not going to give the same results exercising for an hour than for 40 minutes you would think if i exercise for an hour five days per week i'm gonna lose weight yeah no well well, no no actually no way jose (laughs) yeah Yeah. and sometimes it can put but i learned the hard way that that can working out too much can can put the body at stress that can actually you can actually um either maintain or won't lose weight at all exactly you got it because that stress what is it what's it called it's called cortisol too much cortisol so Mm -hmm. too much cortisol boom fat around the middle that won't budge and too much cortisol releases the storages uh the stores of um uh, glucose and and that glucose causes insulin to be secreted so you're going to have high insulin and over time you become insulin resistant Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And type two diabetic. Yeah. 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 So my last question. Sure. Uh, Sure. As far as we talk and I'm I'm still on peptides. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I wanted to to ask. Sure. As with me being a diabetic. Yeah. And having a heart condition. Yeah. Will peptides be beneficial for those two things? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, as long as you are doing other things alongside, okay? So if you, I'm not, I'm sure you're not going to do it, but it's an example. You cannot say, okay, I'm going to take those peptides because they're amazing and I'm going to still eat my pizza and I'm still going right. to smoke, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? So you got to be sensible, okay? No smoking, no drinking, yeah. low GI diet, okay? Exercise according to your capabilities and according to the level of stress in your life. Mm-hmm. Make changes in your life. Okay. Yeah. Empower yourself by meditating, creating this commun- communion with infinite consciousness, remind remembering that the, the kingdom of God is within you. Yeah. And if the kingdom of God is within you, you are the king of your kingdom, meaning you have all the tools at your disposal within you yeah. to achieve all your goals. Yeah. Okay. So if you have that power in your kingdom, it gives you courage. It gives you positivity. It gives you optimism. Mm. It gives you faith. Okay, yeah. you cannot yeah. take a bunch of supplements, but in the, back in the somewhere in your mind, doubting that ah, yeah. this is bullshit. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> this, is, this is BS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because then the power of the mind is infinite, infinite. It is. It is. So you're going to you're going to block 
the good effects of whichever supplement or drug or food or diet or exercise that you're trying to apply in order to to get good results out of that yeah so you need to you you need you see you see if you want to reverse any condition you need to change the way you live and you need to change the way you think yeah, yeah? In my course i teach how to refine your mindset yeah because in the first place, when we get diseased, there was a problem with our mindset. Yeah. 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 It takes many years for us to realize, man, I realize now that I shouldn't think like that. Mm. Yeah. Man, I realize now that I shouldn't behave myself in society like that. Yeah. Man, I realize now that I should be more compassionate or I should be more tolerant or I should be da da da. Okay. Right. So our mindset needs to evolve. It's healing is not of the body alone. This is very important. Yeah. Healing is, is body, mind, and, and spirit together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Through yeah. Other. Yeah. So, yeah. so the peptides are going to be amazing for you. Yeah. Anybody mm -hmm. who would like uh, more information and, and, and on how to take the peptides, feel free to email me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I will be very happy to explain to them how to take the peptides. Although on the website, you get a description, but I can give you more be better instructions. Okay. According to uh, the health uh, purpose that you want to, to improve. Uh, by the way, the peptides are not for children or for pregnant women. That's the only contraindication. Okay. okay? For uh, 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 anyone else, yes, no problem. And by the way, did I mention that I'm creating an online course for women with burnout? Did mm -hmm. I mention this to you? Tell us about it. Yeah, sure. Okay. So following my personal experience and my recovery that... <laughs> took a few years <laughs> yeah. yeah i i came up with the idea that i needed to I, i'm always thinking how am i going to support other people and how am i going to be of service to humanity i'm always thinking how am i going to be of service because i don't want to die one day having had a very selfish life everything right. just for me 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 right that would be terrible for me i, I don't that that makes me sad it makes me sad so I, I was thinking how am i going to be of service to humanity and i said okay what is my gift my gift like yours is as well yvonne and like the gift of all those women that are listening to us right now and they are burned out is precisely their burnout Okay, I address the women mainly because that's my specialty, but men are also very welcome to contact me if they need any help. Yeah. So, so I said, okay, I'm going to create a program that combines functional medicine, nutritional therapy, yoga, very advanced and very unique mm -hmm. yoga practices from antiquity, and the chakras the chakras of yoga I'll, i i can explain what that is yeah. everything together to help these women understand what are the root causes of their burnout why they are burnt out and how to reverse it and to give them the tools all the necessary tools for them to have at home they don't need to travel to any clinic. They don't need to travel to any hospital at home with all of the, of the above and with my support online and with a set of presentations, slide presents, slideshow presentations that, and videos, videos that I am creating right now uh, that they would receive into their inbox every week for 12 weeks in a row. So it's a 12 week program. Mm. Yeah. So right now I'm in the process of creating that course. I'm halfway through. Yeah. And, um, and by the way, if it's okay with you, Yvonne, I would like to mention as well that I am also going to create a pilot group mm -hmm. where I will gather five women that are very motivated very truly, truly motivated, ready to create the changes in their life that they really need to make. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. that have no excuses. Okay. I, I don't, for example, I don't want to work with women that tell me, oh, I'm very ill. I feel terrible. I'm exhausted. I'm burned out. But yeah, I hear that you have a fantastic program, but let me ask my husband for permission. Yeah, that's not the type of women that I want to work with. I need to work with women that are independent and that they are in control and that they're ready to create the changes that they want. Yeah. So I'm offering an opportunity, Yvonne, for five women that are listening to us now who would love to work with me, who are ready to get started, no excuses. And um, I will... Um, be working with them online they can be in america i can be here in the uk and we would be getting together um monthly so Mm. once per month in a group setting with other women that are doing the same and once per month on a one-to-one on a one-on-one this the ladies and myself individually and i would be giving them all the support that they need and as an exchange I will be creating with them, with their help, a success story, a success story with some videos, short videos, just one minute, long videos, nothing extreme, some pictures and some testimonials of their, of how they evolve through the weeks, right? Uh, Putting into practice all the tools that I will be teaching them. This is awesome. This is really awesome. Um, Yes, yes. So... Yeah, I, I have a little link that I uh, would like to share with them. Yeah. And uh, that link, if they want to uh, find out more information about this opportunity, mm-hmm. is www.opportunitywithtatiana.vitalityexpression.co.uk. Thank you so much. This was really good. This was educational for me. How can people get in touch with you? You mentioned it earlier, but um, yes. if you can yes. give your website. Yes, of course. Opportunity website again. Yeah. Okay. So my website is vitalityexpression.co.uk. Vitality Expression dot co dot uk that's my website Mm -hmm. and the link for the pilot group is opportunity with tatiana dot vitality expression dot co dot uk and i'm gonna um put that information along with the discount Um, yeah thank you yvonne fantastic And thank you, Tatiana, um, for dropping all the gems (laughs) (laughs) for all the information and for the pilot program and everything that you're doing to um, empower not just women, but men too. This has been very educational and enlightening to me. Um, and I hope that the listeners, this was enlightening and an eye opener to them too. I'm going to probably listen to this again. And, and I've been taking notes the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh-huh. Yvonne, it's, it's my absolute pleasure. It's my absolute pleasure. Chatting with you was amazing. And uh, again, anyone who is in trouble with their health, I'm more than happy to uh, connect with them. And uh, remember my message, there is a notion of hope for people with burnout. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. And to the listeners, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Let's Talk About Healing. Be sure to like, follow, and share this with anyone who needs to hear it. Look, you owe it to yourself to grow and heal on purpose. Until next time, be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk About Healing with Yvonne Pierre on Hindsight Media Radio 103.5 FM. We hope you enjoyed the show. 
sure to subscribe, like, and share.